Seasons, greetings, happy new year and all the rest. Well, been a while, but uh, that's the way it goes. Um, quite impressed looking at the figures. Uh, we're at like 985 subscribers and over 176,000 views in uh, not really a long time at all, I guess, since uh, December 2013. So uh, a couple of years and all of that and uh, you lot doing quite well. So what we have this time around is a uh, cordless phone, unit and brand, and uh, it's it's a bit special in that it actually uh, talks, It'll, it converts uh, text to speech. So I'm picking it uh, reads out the name of who's calling or the phone number of who's calling if you haven't got them stored. Um, and it, uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't think it's voice activated, but certainly um, it's, it's for, uh, this one's for someone who's blind, and uh, so they, they find that text-to-speech quite useful. Now what's happened is, uh, happened before, where they get um, a, a power surge, they, they live out in the country, so it's all overhead lines, um, and, and they get power cuts frequently, and every now and then uh, that results in the, the base of this unit uh, being damaged. Um, things that cause that out there is uh, high winds if, if, if lines are flapping about and, uh, and hit each other or uh, you get a bird on the lines and they take off and, and then one wing touches one line and another wing touches the phone line and, and uh, kills the bird in the process. So yeah, let's uh, rip into this and uh, we're likely going to see uh, evidence of a previous repair. But um, I think perhaps we plug it in and just verify what's going on. Okay, well I've uh, plugged it into the mains and uh, seems to be functioning. Four old messages. Um, and the uh, handset's charging. It's a uh, completely flat battery. Um, yeah, so... As far as that's concerned, the operation side of it is fine. So um, it probably is damaged to the phone line circuitry. Now they had it plugged into a surge protector. So I'm hoping that they tested it. Um, well, I'm hoping they tested the line with another phone first to prove that the line was okay. And um, also that they tested it um, unplugged from this, so directly into the wall socket uh, in case this here has gone and uh, destroyed itself to save the device it was plugged into, a little surge protector there. So we'll have a look at that too and make sure that's okay internally as well. Um, but uh, I'll give it a few minutes to get some charge into the handset so we've actually got something to test with. Uh, I don't believe you can call out on the base as there's no keypad on the base so, um, or no real sign of speakerphone or anything. Uh, uh, looks like there's speakerphone on the handset, so it'll have a built-in speaker, but it won't activate on the base. So, uh, yeah, we'll let's let it sit and charge for a few minutes and uh, carry on. Taking the screws out of here, so while that phone's charging, we'll have a look inside and see how this is put together. So we have... A uh, couple of uh, neon, uh, little neon indicator lights. Now that one looks unhealthy. Now I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but uh, in these little neon tubes, is uh, they don't have a filament. They've just got a couple of little uh, prongs little electrodes that sit near each other and uh, of course the uh, electricity across those um, causes a, uh, just I guess it energizes the gas to emit light um, this one is all cloudy you see you can't really you can see it's all cloudy inside like it's uh, been destroyed whereas that one is uh, not 
So that's interesting. We can check the fuse up the top there. Let's see what uh, state that's in. There's also what looks like a whole lot of. Um, there's a few mobs there. Surge protection, um, possibly resettable fuse there and there. So we can check those, but that's interesting that that's completely, completely clouded. And where that sits, that's a, a protected light, and this is a fault light, so there'll be something going on in there that determines which light should light up and when. Have a look under here. Pretty clean. So if we have a look, that light there is driven by that transistor. So the protected light is driven, or the fault light, I should say, is driven by that transistor there. And the protected light is driven off. And there's a resistor that goes to there, which goes through to there, which goes through to... Um, neutral and the other side of that goes through to uh, looks like phase uh, what we can see here is we've got uh, one MOV that goes from neutral to uh, on the underside it goes to this fuse on this side and then we've got another MOV that goes from uh, a phase uh, to that fuse as well so that will be and, and that fuse goes through to ground to so that would be suppressing transients across phase and neutral um, and up here we've got three mobs that go from phase um, straight across to neutral as well um, and that fuse there is just in line with this fuse up here so it come, yeah, comes in through that fuse and through that fuse and then off um, yeah and our phone suppressor over here uh, all we have is a couple of small fuses and uh, those little blue things which uh, are marked as Q but I thought they were capacitors may go to ground um, one off each line hmm the fuses look okay in this so don't know that they've actually done anything to protect the phone but I mm, thought they might have mobs on there as well but maybe I don't know Just run over with a uh, measuring resistance. Uh, that fuse is okay. Those two fuses are okay. The MOVs are in the meg ohm range, which is what you'd expect. Uh, they don't conduct until a um, predetermined voltage level, uh, at which point they almost become a short circuit to, to pass that uh, fault current through. Uh, these two fuses, now, they're an interesting fuse, but uh, they have actually completely vaporized. There's a, um, still a strip up the middle that the uh, fuse wire would have been wound around, but um, that's no longer in existence. So the fuses have gone, but obviously not fast enough to save the base unit. Um, and those fuses, if we have a look are in series with the line so the phone will definitely not work if still plugged into this device but uh, it be interesting to see what happens when plugged in directly into the phone jack well let's see how charged this uh, handset is a couple of bars one bar one bar We'll give it a few more minutes. 
Okay, so I don't have a standard phone line here. I run voice over IP. Uh, so this is a router come ATA, and it converts uh, your internet connection to uh, an analog telephone adapter. And uh, we've got a light on the front that shows line one. It's the only one registered. And if I plug it into, if I plug the um, base into that, that light starts flashing. Uh, it thinks it's off hook. Um, if I then pick up the handset, I can hear dial tone. Uh, but if I dial numbers, it doesn't attempt to dial out. And if I hang up again, it still flashes off hook. So there's um, something definitely gone astray inside there. And um, I'm wondering if the dial tone is coming from this or if it's being generated by the base if it's if it's coming from here or if it's being generated by the base I know I can I've got it unplugged I'll pick up and see if I can hear a dial tone okay no dial tone so whatever the cause it's making this think that it's off hook um, and then this can hear the dial tone but when you dial the numbers are not being passed out through the line so there's some sort of two-way uh, signaling that's not happening there, I think. Oh, it looks like about six screws around the perimeter that my screwdriver doesn't fit. Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> wow. Um, not sure what we're going to find in here, if it's going to be just sort of burnt out traces or damaged componentry. Um, I think there's a transformer involved is a form of isolation similar to uh, on a Ethernet um, socket I've got the output transformer there coupling um, or maybe not I don't know nice and easy disassembly no horrible clips that we do have rather stiff flex down there that's holding things in place and there we go okay I don't immediately see a transformer but there are a couple of inductances um, little surface mount inductors that'd be a, a good starting point top side is just a keypad and a speaker and uh, a uh, handset in oh actually no it's a it's a find page button um, and here we've got a couple of wire uh, that would be the antenna funny enough it's even marked antenna uh, all right let's remove these screws get this board out get a closer look at it all right so so far I've uh, traced it out a little and we have um, each one of the center pins is there's only two pins that are used in the socket uh, each one one goes through this inductor here uh, and into this so this is a bridge rectifier uh, phone lines have about uh, 30 or 40 volts AC on them so that's uh, coming into the bridge rectifier the other line goes through a capacitor in series to this inductor to the other side of the bridge rectifier and uh, I'm not too sure what the circuit does with the DC uh, component once that's uh, in the system but uh, I'm, I'm thinking we'll look at that first because that's definitely something that would um, not withstand a large surge uh, even the inductors could have burned out so we'll test them first with the uh, multimeter on your resistance range and uh, a beep for short circuit there we go so that's about four ohms on that inductor there um, eh. and 
yeah, 3.7 on both. Um, now we'll check the bridge rectifier. And uh, <clears throat> right, so as you know, your bridge rectifier, um, we have diodes internally connected like this. Your AC comes in here and here, and that gives you a positive uh, out there and your negative uh, here. So we'll have to measure from the negative with our um, positive on, on there, it's the anodes there, so positive there, and then your negative lead on each of the AC pins to check that diode and then that diode for forward bias. And the same again with this. Um, with the positive on the AC, each of the AC legs, and the negative on the positive pin to check the forward bias of these ones. Make sure that they all pass through and none are shorted. <coughs> so in practice, it will go something like this. We have our AC on the left, two AC pins on the left. So we'll go positive an AC, now I'm not sure which one's negative, I think was that one, or was it positive, oh, there we go, so we've got half a volt drop there, and half a volt drop there, and then if we go, they're negative on each AC pin, now positive on the negative side, we have a short circuit, and half a volt drop there, so immediately, one of the internal diodes has uh, short circuited and uh, we'll pull that off the circuit to double check. I doubt there's anything in circuit causing that to show as a short circuit. Then we'll uh, do some other basic checks and see what we get. I'll use the hot air gun on this but you could use just a solder iron. Um, build up a ball of solder between the two legs because they're not that far apart um, get a small flat screwdriver on one side and give it a bit of a, a twist and, and lift as you apply heat to melt the solder and just lift it up um, once the legs are off the board you could uh, uh, remove that solder and uh, heat the other side and pull it off There's a bit of um, ground plane in this, but, uh, oh, there we go. Didn't sink a lot of heat away. So we'll double check that for you out of circuit, and we're going AC, positive on AC to positive pin, and positive on the other AC to positive pin. We've got normal vo uh, diode drops there, and we want negative on the AC with uh, positive on the negative pin and then the same with the other AC pin oh look it looks good out of circuit that's really bizarre yet if I was to probe the circuit board as we can see there's nothing doing there if I switch around, no, nope. no shorts appearing. So that's very interesting. I wonder if the heat has done something to fix whatever was wrong inside it. Might be interesting to put it back on and plug the line in and see what happens. I would not leave it in there. It would not be a reliable device. But at least just to see if we're on the right path or not. Well that's interesting, I just uh, checked the voltage with it plugged into the ATA and there's uh, nothing there. So, I'm not too um, clued up on phone line systems. I'm pretty sure a standard uh, house line has AC on it all the time, but maybe these ATAs, um, they might only produce it during an incoming call to, um, as like a ringer um, signalling voltage rather, more than anything else. 
So uh, we'll shift our focus away from this at the moment. Uh, the diode junction is still measuring okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe one of the test leads was um, nudging something else at the time um, and made it look like there was a short, but uh, put me up the wrong path. Anyway, let's uh, maybe look at uh, the other um, side where the uh, what else connects to these pins to do the actual communication, um, uh, voice voice signals and so on. Right, just for a reference, I grabbed my own uh, cordless phone and measured the resistance across the two pins on the input connector, output connector, and um, line connector, <laughs> and uh, I get no resistance across here. Um, on this device, I'm getting 200 ohms, and it may be enough to think that it's, I don't quite know, I think it's off hook or something. Um, yeah, I'm uh, just kind of winging it at the moment, but uh, anyway, we've got the two lines, and uh, get a bit of light on that. Um, hmm. So that comes down through to here. This is a appears to be a MOV um, across to one of the inductors. Uh, the second line comes down to here, and that's just a looks like a plain old capacitor. Um, now the MOV measures about eight ohms, and the capacitor is the only other link in the chain because it connects to the one side of the MOV and the other pin. So of course measuring across the capacitor is going to have the same effect and we're getting um, a steady 2 or 198 ohms. Yeah. So might just pop that capacitor out although if I do that uh, if I do that oh yeah look okay so pin actually comes across to this inductor via there. Um, initially I thought it joined, um, it went to this inductor, um, it just goes through to the other side, but I was mistaken. So that one goes there, and the other one comes through to here, and there's a uh, capacitor there, so capacitor runs uh, across the thinking maybe that capacitor has been affected by the power surge um, if I pull that out um, be interesting to see what happens a little bit of glue joining the capacitor to the MOV just uh, it's a very soft glue so we just cut through that not a problem separate those I'll grab it with me pliers and see if I can't tug it through the board while heating the pins. Right, I'm just going to slip off with those pliers. Hang on. Solder sucker to the rescue. Any physical damage there? Nothing obvious. Let's measure that resistance on there. Hundred and eighty-seven ohms. Let's just take a closer look at what the markings on that is. Appears to be the glue two seven one K. Pretty sure that's a capacitor. Pretty sure it shouldn't read a constant resistance. So with that gone, let's just plug it in and see what happens. I'll keep you trained on the uh, the ATA light. We're looking at line one there. Uh, if, see if I plug it in, if it starts flashing or if it thinks it's off hook. The base is not plugged in at the moment, um, and it wasn't before either when it was uh, flashing. Okay, so there we go. It's uh, stopped flashing. Um, now what we'll do is put power on the base and. Uh, the handset's died, so I'm going to have to let that charge up again and uh, see if we can make a call. Okay, we may not need to 
wait for this to charge up to get some activity. So um, let's give it a burl. Ah, incoming call. All right, let's see uh, if we can get a dial tone. Ah, dial tone out speakerphone there. Let's dial. It's ringing. Good evening. It's 9.09 p.m. Welcome to Service Express. Okay, and that answered, and that worked. Ripper. All right. I need to find another capacitor. <laughs> and that sort of rating, and it looked like... Um, it looked like it might be a high voltage one. Um, I think usually those blue ones are. But I'll do a bit of research um, and find something to chuck back in its place. But there you go. Looks like the um, high voltage surge uh, internally shorted the capacitor um, or created a sorry a low resistance, not a short, but became a low resistance, which was upsetting the uh, signaling on the line. Hang on a minute, I hear you saying. That doesn't sound right. And you might be right. So, on further in investigation, this is a MOV um, metal oxide varistor, which um, should be a much higher resistance than that. So, still along the same lines as where we were going with it. Um, not a capacitor. Um, in hindsight, I suppose a capacitor like this would have been just open circuited by a high voltage surge, but this one um, has done its dash. It's it's not uh, returning to a very high resistance, and um, that makes a lot more sense being uh, in parallel with the input line. So um, I haven't looked further at the other component that's in series with the other pin. Uh, it measures eight ohms. It may also be a varistor of some sort. Um, I'll find out, and at uh, 8 ohms, it probably should be... Uh, well, no, 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 no. Getting tired here. Um, it's in series with the other line. It can't be a MOV. It would, uh, it would be high resistance, and then would get nothing through it, and then uh, that wouldn't work either. So, uh, anyway, I might, out of curiosity, I'll have a look at what the other part is. Um, thinking that it's actually okay, but it's this MOV which has um, developed a low resistance and is holding down the line. So I will need to find another MOV in order to maintain protection of the unit in future. And I uh, may even put a couple of fuses in that uh, surge protector, but um, we'll, we'll ask the person concerned. Um, they may be purchasing a more expensive, more more reliable, perhaps, a surge protector. Although I don't know if you pay more, if you necessarily get something longer lasting, or if you still get a fuse at the end of the day. So here's the beauty of having junk. You can get spare parts for free. And here we have the mains side of a uh, computer power supply, which has been ravaged and down here we've got another little MOV. This one uh, is uh, rated 241K as the part of the part number. Now I've found a, few, a couple of references for these and uh, as we can see on here the original one is 271K which has a operating voltage of about 175 and a uh, um, clamping voltage of 455 if I'm following the uh, clamping voltage 455, uh, maximum AC voltage and DC voltage, and uh, and it's uh, looking like if we go for the 241K, which is one below, it's really only going to give us some extra protection because it's going to clamp at a lower voltage, but it's still miles above what's going to be operating at of no no more than say sort of 40 volts, I think, on the phone lines. So anyway, yeah. It's going to be absolutely fine, and it'll clamp sooner than the one that was in it. So if there's any other surges, 
um, it will be better protected, wouldn't it? And there I've installed the replacement part and tested on the uh, meter at being a extremely high resistance, as one would expect. You might also note a little jagged uh, exposed solder mask there. Um, that's a spark gap. It allows any excess um, over, over voltage surge or high voltage surge to jump across the gap. Yeah, extra protection. Let's get this thing back together. That phone's been on charge for about half an hour and it hasn't gained any more than one bar, so I think the battery might be shot in it as well. Well, it's the next day. It's been charging all night, and if I take it off charge, you might be able to see it's only up to half. So um, I've got a feeling that that battery is no good. Uh, it could have very well have been sitting for months. So fully drained and uh, not the flashest. Um, might see if I can recover it using some force charging on the bench supply or something, but other than that, I think it's going to need a new one. Well, anyway, she's all good to go. I uh, hope you lot have a, a happy and safe new year, and thanks for watching.